There is a lot of issues going on with this case that are now flooring detectives and the family. I've been monitoring the case of Sebastian Rogers. He's a boy that went missing in Tennessee. His mom has a message. Love you so much and we want you to come home and you're not in trouble. Search into the 15 year old's disappearance has all failed. This is a boy that has autism. He's a high functioning autistic individual and the parents are coming under heavy fire right now because it is leading to believe that foul play is involved. But here is something that the stepfather had to say early on in the investigation. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed. People pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Many here in the public are just concerned about the well-being of Sebastian Rogers and would like to see him come home and come home safely. However, the boy has been missing for a significant amount of time, and now this particular case has led investigators to a landfill. Landfills appear to be the most promising place for parents to dump their children because this is not the first time. I was on scene at the Leilani case, and this was related to her 20-month-old son, Quentin Simon, which was found in a landfill. Leilani Simon is behind bars. Also, Elijah Vu, he has not been found yet. He's missing from Two Rivers, Wisconsin, and also the detectives and the investigators in this case have gone to the landfill and are currently doing a landfill search. Now, one thing is for sure, it appears he struggled with some things for quite some time. It's hard to imagine what little Maddie went through while she was living in the household with Stefan Stearns. My heart bleeds for the people that knew her and loved her the most. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to Stefan Stearns and what he did to Maddie Soto. For those that don't know, sustenance is Stefan Stearns. This was deleted a while ago and it says, just to think old people are gross, people who force themselves bodily upon small children are gross. And his response was, we aren't talking about pedos and ours here. We're talking about family members trying to give affection like hugs and kisses, telling kids it's totally cool to refuse to reciprocate. That's where your best judgment as a parent comes in. If bad uncle touchy wants to go long gropey hug, then say no all day. But when sweet grandma wants a kiss on the cheek or a normal non-perverted family member wants to give them a hug, that for F sakes, what's the issue? No one is talking about forcing themselves on children here. So obviously we're seeing some cracks in the surface did mom know about this? Obviously, there were some things going on behind the curtain, and this was going on two years ago, about the time that we thought this abuse was happening with Maddie, according to law enforcement. So we're having all these conversations on these chats and reddits from him, and it's, it seems like it's about his own life. And now we're learning he's been abusing Maddie for at minimum two years about the time this was posted. Let me know your thoughts. afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. This is kind of an impromptu uh, live showing. Um, we're just receiving some new information about an hour ago, just breaking. 60 new charges have been filed against Stefan Stearns 
by the state attorney's office after the investigation revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts. We can only imagine what those criminal acts were. My heart is just in the floor this afternoon uh, when I think of Maddie Soto. I just think of a sad little girl that nobody even knew was so sad. And it, it, it just breaking my heart, hearing this information, knowing the gravity and the reality of what we're talking about here. It is just very hard to put into words this afternoon as we are learning more about her case and her short life here on earth. Guidance, it's nice to see you. Leo, Mike Stevens, it's great to have you here. The Real Me Too. Emma, it's nice to see you. Rhonda, Colleen, uh, Baby Yoda the Trucker, it's nice to see you, love. Uh, Carissa, good afternoon. Just Debbie, Amazing Grace, it's nice to see you. Margaret, it's nice to have you here as well. Tammy Sue, Pam, Joyce, it's nice to see you. Who else? I felt, think I scrolled over. Sonia, Guidance, good afternoon. Ruby, it's nice to see you. Who else do we have? Maria, Bye, you, babe. If I miss you, if I gloss over you, I'm really sorry. Cindy, it's nice to see you as well. As uh, a Taryn, it's nice to have you from South Africa. Wow, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about a crazy story here stateside in the United States where I hear we are just the cray-cray of the world. Um, so uh, stick around. You might, uh, I don't know what to even say. It's just getting bad out there. Fly on Your Wall, 1977, Southern Grammy, our beautiful Southern Grammy, still in the hospital, needs lots and lots of prayers from us. Um, got into a bad wreck. If you guys want to go to my Facebook page and you want to know how you can help her, uh, we've got her um, GoFundMe or, or, or some type of funding um, activities over there on our Facebook page. If somebody wants to drop that down in the chat, they can. It's nice to see you. I think I got through everybody. Um, if I missed you, uh, bub bubbly Beth, bubbly Beth. Oh, I love that. That's, that's, that's cool. I love that bookworm rapper rapper. I hope you're nice in here today. It's nice to see you, my love. Nice to see you rapper. I want to give you a, a virtual hug, uh, buck cherry lover. It's nice to see you as well. TL Sensimilia. <laughs> crazy chicken lady. I'm becoming a crazy cat lady. My, 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 the cats are starting to adopt me. Every morning I go out, I seem like I have an extra mouth or two to feed. Uh, Pittsburgh nurse. And by the way, I have no animals just, just to throw that out there. Like, well, why are you feeding your cat outside? I have no cat. I have no cats. Plural. I have no animals. The only animal that lives with me is me. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to see. You. Okay, so uh, guys, if I glossed over you, I'm really sorry. Cheeky chops, Shelly. I saw I saw Crafty Chris up in here. Every sweet and sassy. I see you guys. So a uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to get started. So many of you, if you're here, you may know about this case. You may not know about this case. This is the girl. Oops, wrong side. I forgot my mirror. So this right over here is Madeline Soto. She, we found out that she passed away on March 1st when they found her body. Uh, she disappeared on February 26th. Apparently, her mom's boyfriend dropped her off at school. Uh, he, she didn't want him. She didn't want him dropping her right off at the front of the school. So he took her down the road over to like a four or six lane highway and dropped her off at a church over there. And uh, then when mom went and picked her up at 4:30 in the afternoon. She's not at school. She hadn't been to school. Mom still hasn't received no notification that she wasn't in school. So she calls law enforcement. Law enforcement obviously couldn't meet her, and, and they ended up meeting her at the school around 8 o'clock, right about the time she got her notification that her child wasn't in school, by the way. 8 o'clock notification that her child was not in school. Many people have been mixed on this channel. Uh, just mixed, you know, whether mom knew, whether mom didn't know, we're seeing some things that we can at least honestly say, honestly, you know, factually, that there were red flags at minimum she was not paying attention to. Absolutely, hands down, there is enough information corroborated that we can say that there were a lot of red flags in this young girl's uh, life 
Did it rise to the level where her mom knew that this type of stuff was going on? I have not found that yet, but I am working on it. I am working on it. I'm working very hard. I'm working around the clock, trying to find uh, as much connection to this as possible because we do have a mixed bag and it's a very delicate situation trying to uh, manage this case because we, you know, a lot of us like to, well, not like to, but we do act on emotion. Okay. Sometimes things are, you, you can't have emotion in it to be able to see what's really going on. And this is very, a highly disturbing case. This is a young girl that was abused. Um, we're learning a lot about this. The, the, the man that, that is accused of this, his name's Stefan Stearns. He has known Maddie since she was five or six years old. It is my belief. Now, then again, this is speculative. This is only my opinion. I have nothing really concrete to base this on other than we understand these types of predators. But I truly believe that he targeted this mom to get to this child all the way back then. I really do. I believe the mom had self-esteem issues. Again, just my opinion. I know sometimes my opinion offends people, but it's my opinion to have. Um, in my opinion, I, I feel like he used her mental health against her at times to dismiss or make her second guess her own maybe parental instinct. I truly do believe he did that because he's a master manipulator. He's a predator. So he's conniving, he's cunning, and he's manipulative. So us thinking that he is not manipulating the crap out of this mother, that he's not grooming her as much as he's grooming this girl, you guys are wrong. I believe mom is a victim of this. Did she have, it, you know what? But she may have looked the other way. That's what people are saying, that, that, that they believe Maddie may have told her mother. And maybe she did try. You know, we can't look past that. You know, maybe she did try. I haven't found any indication one way or another whether she tried or did. Or was successful but even if she did you know if we we had to take a basis and if i had to look at her past maddie's past behavior i would look at her communications with her friends there's a spanish-speaking television program called telemundo i think it's telemundo 31 or something in orlando and they were out there at a um like a a community event it's not her most recent vigil it, it or, or the one that's coming up. I can't remember. It's already happened. I think it's already happened. Uh, but it was at it was at one that ju had just happened like a week or so ago. And Telemundo was out there, and one of her best friends came up and talked to him. It was a boy, and he indicated to them that she, that she had indicated at some point in you know a couple years ago that her that her mom's boyfriend had hurt her, but you know he didn't really elaborate what that hurt was. And so you got to look at child behavior and that would be kind of the language I would expect for a child to use hurt. You know, they don't know, uh, you know, they may know good hurt, bad hurt, or, you know, whatever. They just know hurt that, that whatever happened hurt. And we don't know what he was saying he was doing, you know, and there's, I, I don't want to get too, too much into that. But there was these, these conversations, that video that you just saw showed you the kinds of conversations he was having with strangers in Reddit posts. And he was having to argue a point about touchy, touchy, feely, feely stuff. I I'm sorry. I'm 44 years old and still to this day have never had a conversation like that with people. That kind of conversation. Never had to have it. I don't know how many people in my audience have had to have it with other people. Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe it's just because it just isn't a conversation that I've ever had. You know, I never had a reason to have it or something. Maybe you, maybe somebody in my audience has had a conversation where they're arguing why grandma should be able to hug and kiss their grandchild or whatever that weird post was all about. You know, and I don't know of any grandchild that doesn't absolutely love their grandmother unless they were the grandmother is like mean. Uh, yes, I can say that. You know, there are mean grandmothers out there. I'm sure many of people are probably nodding their head saying, yeah, I got one myself. I never had the pleasure of meeting my grandmother, my biological grandmother. She was already gone. Um, she, she, she lost her life when my mom was only 15. So I never really got to, to meet my, my actual grandmother, my great grandmother I got to meet. 
but um, my actual grandmother, I never had the pleasure of meeting. I, I heard she was a, a beautiful lady, uh, but you didn't want to piss her off. <laughs> if you did, you might want to duck. You might have one of those uh, cast iron skillets coming your way. <laughs> so, I mean, if I had to think that, you know, anything about my grandma, I have to think she's a little kind of like me, okay? So if you want to know what my grandmother is, I never met the lady, but if she's kind of like me, then I, I, I would have loved her all day long. You know, I loved her all day long, even if she wasn't like me. Um, so I just thought the whole conversation about the grandma stuff was really odd. You know, it seemed like he was... You know how people use third people, like third persons and stuff like that to, to t tell a story, but to try to take their name out of it. Like, oh, my friend Sally had this situation. You know, you, we've all done that, right? Where we're talking about something to somebody or we really want some advice, but we don't want people to know that the advice we're asking for is for us. You know what I'm saying? So we put somebody else in there like Sally or if you need to make it a guy like George, Hubert, <laughs> all right, Jane, John, my uncle John, I've never, I, I do not have an uncle named John that I know of, okay? But I may, I may have had some requests such as, you know, my uncle John had this experience. Do you have an experience like that, right? So I kind of felt when I was reading this that that was what I was getting from him, that I was getting, you know, this was really not a conversation about grandma. This was a conversation about something that happened to him and somebody else that didn't want it, him showing them affection. That's what it seemed like to me. Now, I could be reading more into it. I might be reading more into it because we now know that this man's behind bars, right, for doing horrible things. So naturally, every time we read anything, we're now reading it with a skeptical lens, we're over reading it and looking way into it because we feel like there's sub subtle messages here. And I truly believe there are. So he's got 60 new charges that have been filed against him by the state attorney's office after the investigation revealed those more pictures and images. And then when I pop over here to the news release, this is what the news release states. Actually, let me put it up here. So those that are hearing and impaired um, can read along. Give me just a second. So it's a little bit bigger. Can everybody see that? Don't forget to like this video. If you guys have not already gone out, I don't know what channels you're on. If you're on um, X, please go out there and like this and give a heart. If you're on either of the YouTube channels or any other platform that we're running on right now, please uh, do it. Stop what you're doing and go out there and give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. This is what this uh, press conference or media release states. It says, Kissimmee, Florida, the state attorney's office for the Ninth Judicial Circuit has filed 60 new criminal charges against Stefan Stern, date of birth, 425-1986. It makes me sick. This man is younger than me. He is younger than me. O-M-G. The man associated with the Madeline Soto case. Shortly after Madeline Soto's disappearance, several disturbing images and videos were found on Stefan Stern's phone. The, the city of Kissimmee Police Department quickly arrested Stearns, who remains in custody with the Osceola County Department of Corrections on a no bond. And I just want to say, for those, you guys wonder why I talk about this low-hanging fruit kind of stuff. It's because I kind of I kind of like Florida and how we handle our law. You you screw with our kids, you're asking you you don't you're not going to be Leilani Simon here in the state of Florida. That's that's Georgia and all that liberal crap. I'm sorry not to offend anybody, but I am not a bleeding heart. So just accept me for who I am. I I, I try to keep it at bay, but I'm telling you. This right here is why I'm so tough when I go into these communities and these, these people that are persons of interest and suspects in these horrible crimes, why I start screaming at the politicians to lock their butts up. There's always low-hanging fruit for these people to be in jail while they're handling their investigation. Sometimes there's just not. 
And in those cases, you just have to do your best and 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 live with the person outside of jail. But 90% of these cases, somebody has something that they can be sitting in jail while they're doing these investigations. And that's why I always talk about that low-hanging fruit here on this channel. And when law enforcement don't apply that, when you have something in the past like an abuse, an R, uh, you know, running a stop sign, whatever you could throw their butt in jail for, that's what you do. If they're on probation, violate them on probation. It doesn't matter because you know, darn tootin', they're probably doing some, they're on probation, give them a piss test. 90% of them can't pass. They're supposed to abstain from drugs. They ain't got that doctor's excuse for that, for that green, the green card. They just violated their probation, throw their butt, their butt in jail. That's what we do here in Florida. So when it says shortly after Madeline's disappearance, you know, they quickly arrested Stearns, who remains in custody in the Osceola County Department with no bond. The investigation revealed more images and videos. This is what is highly disturbing. Many of you guys told me when this was coming out that they, that they were concerned that more stuff had gone on, you know, with Madeline. Well, you, those people that were saying that stuff in here, that were vocalizing, you guys were right. Whoever was bringing up, well, what about the other phone and stuff like that? You had a hunch that it, a gut feeling that there's more to this story and you were right. You were absolutely right because there is more to the story. <clears throat> the investigation revealed more images and videos depicting criminal acts and we can only imagine what those acts are. Um, the Kissimmee Police Department provided this evidence to the state attorney's office, which found cause to file the following charges. Guys, this is going to be very, very hard. Oh, my God. Um, this is going to be very hard for you guys to listen to. If you guys have a squeamish stomach, if, if you have PTSD from your own personal situation, uh, guys, please, please, please don't listen to this. We're about to get into it. It's on the, uh, ch the, the screen right now, but I'm about to read it for those that don't want to see it. You're about to hear it. Thank you, guys. Julie, it's lovely to see you, my love. Elle Fig, it's nice to see you. Lori Lowe, it's nice to see you as well, guys. So we have eight counts. SB. SB is like SA, but it's battery. Okay. You, you guys understand that? So I'm going to say SB. And when I say SB, we're going to act like it is just as all the other little initials, but SB is battery. Okay. It's the battery aspect of it. Eight counts of SB on a child under 12. This does not clarify because here's another thing that you guys were very concerned about. You guys have been sending me messages and are concerned about prior to 2022, what had happened or potentially could have happened to this girl, right? Well, this doesn't say anything other than under 12. So some of this could have gone, you know, further even past her 11 year old. We don't know because it's everything under 12 right? So this is, you know, we don't know those eight counts, what her age was or when those eight counts had happened. So guys, this is very problematic. This is just, it's, it's like, I almost want to cry. It, 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 it's just, it's so bothersome for me. And not only was it just the eight counts of the SB, now we got five additional counts of SB with a child 12 and up. Guys, she has only been 12 for a year. She just turned 13. And from 11 to 12, they have five counts. Five counts. And that's the stuff they can prove. This is going to bo bother you. I'm going to say L and L. L L L M, which is lewd and right, but it's instead of it being behavior, it's mull, right? Digestion with a mull in front of it. You guys got it, right? So now we've got um, seven counts of the L L M. Seven counts of L L M. 
Then we have, oh my gosh. This is going to make you want to vomit in your mouth. 40 counts. 40, let me say that again. 40 counts. 40 counts of unlawful possession of material depicting acts by someone 10 or more. <clears throat> we appreciate the effort of our partners in the state attorney's office in assisting with seeking justice for Madeline, says Kissimmee Chief of Police, Betty Holland. With this being a complex case with many facets, our work is not done, and we are continuing our investigation into the timeline leading up to Madeline's death. So not, obviously, not the kind of news we would like to hear. But I can tell you that many of you guys had this gut feeling. You guys knew that it, it wasn't just this, this small little window. You guys knew. We all know this predator type of uh, personality. And... I believe this was engagement long before. That's probably why it was so easy to manipulate her when she got to 11. Because we don't know what he's been doing to bring her up to that point. She's been in his care since she was five or six years old, guys. That is a very impressionable age. He's an authoritarian figure in her life. He's a parental figure. When you're five years old... She, she could have very well been calling him. I mean, I, I wouldn't even like to think exactly Lady 7-Up. Exactly. They could have waited for toxicology before the main charges. Uh, well, see, this is the thing, guys. They already have the toxicology. No, I don't care what law enforcement is telling you or telling their, um, you know, telling the public out there. And they're saying, they're telling the public things to maintain the integrity and not get them all up, you know, to calm the public. They're calming measures. The bottom line is, is she has already been released to her family. The autopsy is complete. The toxicology and everything they need is that they would not release her without everything being done. So we already know it's done. They withheld it from us. How are they able to withheld it, hold it from us? It's very simple. They do this strategy of just giving you just a tidbit of information, and then they tell you they have to wait on the report. In two weeks, people forget, right? People forget. They move on to a different story, another case. In two weeks, the whole world is turned 15 million times upside down and sideways. You lose interest. That's what they That's what they bank on. I mean, look at the Brian Koberger case. Look at how much it was dominating the airways. This, this amazing uh, case that took four people's lives. It's, it, it's absolutely extravagant. We've never seen anything really quite like it before. It's got the whole world's attention. And look at it now. They're having court hearings and barely anybody's even talking about it. It's because we've already moved on to another case. Our minds are very short-term minds. And that's what a lot of people bank on very short-term people. That's why when everything's going crazy here and they're like, oh my God, they're, they're, they're saying this. And I, if you ever hear me, I'm like, why are you worried about it? In two weeks, they're going to forget about it. Because that's about the, that's about what it takes for people to forget about stuff. Two weeks. It's a known fact. I've literally known that for years. A lot of people like, you know, I bet you now that you, you think of it like that, I bet you start noticing it two weeks. Two weeks. You can literally change somebody's mind in two weeks. <laughs> it's crazy. The mind is a crazy thing. That's why I say, you know, there's a lot of manipulation uh, that I see across this country in different different things. I mean, one of the biggest manipulative uh, type of marketing um, that I've ever seen, and and this is a uh, this is using like they they want inside of your head. It's the food industry. It is the food industry, the, like the millions and millions of dollars 
they have spent just to make you crave their French fries from a TV. You, you never even think about it. But yes, McDonald's has spent millions of dollars to find out how to make your mouth water through a TV. That's, you know what I call that? I call that mind effing. Almost like psychop. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those things that they don't like telling you about, but it's not a secret. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they don't broadcast it, but it's well known. And McDonald's is not the only food industry that does that. Haven't you ever noticed that every time you, you, you buy something, the packaging looks so much better than the actual product itself? Because if they pick, took a picture of the actual product. <laughs> themselves, you probably would have picked it up in the box and bought it. It's deceptive advertising, but it works. But it works. But somebody got back, right? And did you guys hear about the Reese cups? The uh, Halloween Reese cups? I think this lady sued them as a class action suit for like 16, I don't know, million, billion, who knows anymore. I can't remember what the number of it was, but a lady sued them. Class action lawsuit. Because they look like a blob instead of a, 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 a pumpkin. Like, people are starting to get tired of it. They're just getting tired of it. Instead of it looking like a pumpkin, it looked like a pumpkin pooped an egg. <laughs> and from what I hear, it wasn't a very pleasing design. <laughs> Reese's do better. Do better. So that's really all I have for you guys. This is, you know, I mean, it... As sad as these 60 charges are being filed against Stefan, I think the one, and it's so sad that this little girl had to lose her life. I hope to God, and this is something that we can all be sure. I hope to God that her death is not in vain. I always try to find a silver lining in all of these things, not I think it just, it may, it, it doesn't make me feel better about them being gone, but it just makes me feel like their life mattered. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, they're not just, uh, just another name going up on the wall. So I always try to find the silver lining, um, in this case. And hopefully the silver lining in this case is that, you know, we're talking to our children, right? If we're in a relationship with another person, maybe we take our, 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 you know, girls out for, you know, just a mommy girl ice cream and just, you know, see how things are, you know, see how that relationship with your man is with them. See, here are some strengths, you know, to talk to them about what they like about them and what they don't like about them. Actually listen to your children. Find out if there's anything you need to be concerned with. Hopefully, hopefully, she... Maddie can help save somebody else. And guys, listen, if your child comes up to you and says something, whether you believe them or not, an ounce of prevention is a worth a whole lot of than a pound of cure, right? So what's, what's the hurt of letting law enforcement investigate the allegations, right? You, you love your man. You know he couldn't do it. You know he couldn't do it, right? Your child is saying that he hurt her. Why don't you go to law enforcement and, 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 and find out, right? Just let them do the investigation. If he did nothing wrong, he did nothing wrong. It, it, problem solved. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to have it eat at you at night. If your child says it, whether you want to believe him or not, just go to prove him wrong. Especially if you don't believe your child. Prove your child wrong. Go to law enforcement, let them do a proper investigation into the allegations and show your child they were wrong. Right? And then you guys know without reverse psychology before the 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 comp, you know the crusty crabs out there decide to turn my words around. Like we're being sarcastic, not sarcastic, but reverse. I guess reverse sarcasm. I don't know what they call it. You guys get what I mean. For all the parents that don't want to believe their children, prove them wrong. That's all I'm saying. For all you great parents out there that when your child comes, you're an ounce of prevention type of person. I like you. 
I like you. Keep doing you. Keep doing it just like that. But still, always have an open communication. I'll tell you something that worked for me. I was a troubled child. Now, take it for what it what it is. I don't know if it'll work this day and age, okay? I don't know. I don't know. But I was a problem child. Why was I a problem child? Because I had crap going on at home I didn't know how to deal with, right? My mommy and daddy were not doing well. Um, there was, you know, alcohol and not substances. We didn't have, you know, my my parent, my mom didn't, my parents didn't have substance abuse issues. My father had a drinking problem. And um so, I mean, we did, it did get a little, it did a little, get a little crazy in our house, but still, I guarantee that if I ever went to my mom, I ever asked her for anything, my mom would believe me first. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. I truly believe, even if she didn't want to believe me, she would do the right thing of making the report for investigators to investigate it. So that's all I'm trying to say is for those great mothers out there that believe your children, God bless you. For the ones that are struggling, maybe your child it has lied to you before. Maybe, you know, I'm one of those people, you lie to me once, I, I question everything, right? So, I mean, we can't look past that. Uh, some people are, well, their mom should have known. Well, you know, sometimes they don't. And sometimes their children are like me, you know, a bad child, because I had a lot of problems I was dealing with, right? So, you know, I lied to my parents constantly. If I went to my mom and told her something, God bless her, I still believe she would have believed me. But, you know, there were, was a time that you'd have to question everything that came out of my mouth. And so, you know, you got to apply that too. It's not really fair. Well, she should have known. Well, was the child lying to her every single day? And every single day this mom was feeling duped? where it was almost like the, the child call, you know, we have to talk about that because it's not fair to constantly blame parents that are doing the best they can, but you know, had a problem child. So we need to have those active and open communication. So this is what worked for me with all of that craziness. Okay. Is I had this one word that I was able to use with my mom, my dad, my stepmother, that if I needed help, I really needed help, I could use this word and no matter what, no matter what, I was not going to be in trouble. I'm not allowed to abuse it or the privilege is taken away. But if I'm ever jammed up, they don't care if I'm drunk. They don't care if I'm halfway across Florida at a party I shouldn't have been at because I snuck out of the bedroom, right? They didn't care. There was one word I was able to use and I would get the help without getting my ass whooped, basically. I used it once. And I have to tell you, it worked well. It worked well. I didn't get in trouble. I got the help I needed when I needed to get it. And it doesn't really matter. This is the great word, the great thing about it. It doesn't matter what the word is because it's a word that's, that's unique to you. I was a violin player at the time. Many people don't realize <laughs> I used to play violin. I tried like hell to be first chair. The best I could do was second chair. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. We still want to we still want to root for the, you know, first chair. Cuz she was so much better. Actually, she really was. And now now that I now that I'm 44 years old, I'm allowed to say she really was amazing. She was amazing, amazing, amazing. So, and I would never be that amazing on a violin. You know what? I, I have a violin here. I try to play it. Woo, doggy. That is definitely a craft that you need to be practicing and honing in on because it was a hot mess. I don't, I don't, I forgot how to tune my damn violin. I haven't touched a violin in like 20 years, 20 years. But that was my keyword to my family was violin. So that's why I'm telling you about the violin. That was my keyword. If I called up and said, my violin is broke or you know, and it, they, they knew that because I, I never asked that I fixed my violin back then, you know, I had my little tuners and stuff. I knew how to do everything right. If a, if a peg broke, I fixed it right. I knew how to take care of my violin. So they wouldn't have to worry about that. So that was my key word. If I called them up and say, you know, I'm really having a problem. My violin is broke or something like that. That's that was my key word to to get my my get out of jail free card right there. That was the word, violin. So anyways, I'm just telling you guys that because I don't know what to do. You know, I just feel like Maddie's mom 
didn't know this. There's just, there is just something inside of me that this woman would have never allowed this to happen to her child if she knew about it. Did she miss some red flags when it came to that man? Oh, yes, she did. Oh, yes, she did. Um, but I think he groomed her just as much as he groomed Maddie. I think he used her mental illness, her weaknesses, her self-esteem issues. I think he used all of that against this woman to make her think what she was seeing was not what she was seeing. I truly believe that. Um, but I got to say, there were still red flags. It's very disappointing. It's very disappointing because there were truly red flags that I saw. Um, but you know what? When you're blinded by love, you're blinded by love. Um, I'm still, you know, my, my, there's a lot of people in my chat that just don't, don't believe this mom didn't know. So I'm still working on that. I just need corroboration. That's what I need. If you guys can send me something where you guys have heard from this person or that person that she, that she was talking to about her daughter or her daughter had mentioned something to her, just something, something tangible. Because right now, all I'm getting is people saying, you know, this is what I believe, but why do you believe that? Well, it, when you ask them why they believe that is because that's their experience. And so it's, it's like you got to apply their experience and not that their experience is, inv or is invalid or anything in any way. It's just that all of our experiences are much, much different. And so I'm trying to, to validate everybody's you know, justifications on why they're mad at mom, but I really need to see it's still all emotional arguments. Nothing is in black and white when it comes to the mom and what her level of knowledge is. And of course, with the lack of charges um, against uh, Stefan and the mother for that matter. And, and, you know, they're, they're doing a lot right now behind the scenes, trying to piece this puzzle together to prove that that man is the one, um, that put her in that area and would have had knowledge. Now the whole backpack, seeing him on the camera and stuff like that, uh, you know, that's, that's really, really good, um, evidence and really does paint a picture. But again, everybody knew that, um, Jennifer, Jen, Soto, the mom, was just had hard times waking up in the morning. It just so happened all of this stuff was going on in the morning. So just curious, um, this is sad, but not, ex not unexpected with the 60 new charges. I am just overwhelmed right now with the amount, to be honest with you. It just, it just makes my heart hurt even more for Maddie. You know what I'm saying? Like we all kind of painted this horrible picture that she, can you imagine though, guys, I mean, just hear me out. And I, I know I'm beating a dead horse and, you know, for some of you guys, when it comes to Jennifer Santanello or not Santanello, Jennifer Soto, um, just think about it like this. Can you imagine you thinking everything is going great? Like you're nothing you, normal, normal, pro, everybody. And let's face it. We all have fighting and, and crap. We, if, 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 if the real world knew what went behind our doors, we would be highly embarrassed. Okay. We've all had experiences like that, right? Uh, Aunt Mary's a drunk on Thanksgiving. Yeah, if, if, if people knew the hot mess our family was right. So we all have family problems behind closed doors that we don't want the entire world in on. So, you know, this is a, maybe these are normal things. Maybe she's used to having kind of chaotic relationships. That's part of the abuse, re, abuse relationship, right? We, those of me, my family, my coffee club family, that's been here in an abusive relationships. We know how we cater to our abuser. We know how much we loved our abuser. We know that we, we believe when our abuser, even though they were our abuser, when they told us something, we believed them. We believed everything that they said. That's how they had us under so much control because it was always our fault. It was always our fault. Can you imagine that this woman in this relationship probably thinking maybe, maybe, you know, Maddie's father was physically abusive. So having this good looking man that doesn't put her, his hands on her might have been right up her alley, right? But can you imagine just being completely, utterly in the dark and then one day waking up, your daughter's gone and you find out the level of abuse at the hands of somebody that you trusted and loved? Like, I just can't in my life and in my world, uh, just the nausea, 
the absolute gut sickening horrid feeling that you could ever imagine in your life and then to start having all of those red flags that you overlook just flooding in and you going through this entire self-destruction and i can't describe it other than complete utter self-destruction because you are totally you 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 take that fault you take that pain you take everything and it you it you never get over the fact of the woulda, shoulda, coulda. The woulda, shoulda, coulda. I got to tell you a story. So my dad had rental properties and, you know, I'd occasionally go over to the rental property. And I remember there's this one drunk man. I think I was 14 years old, one drunk man. And he was brought me in there to talk to me about his fish. My dad was out at the table, literally 50 feet away. 50 feet away, I'm going into this man's room to look at this fish tank. And I remember he was a drunk. I remember he barely had teeth. And he's like, oh, look at here. Here, sit right here. You know, and how controlled he was. He ended up putting his hand on my leg and I popped up and went back out to my father. I, I don't even think, I don't even know if I ever told my dad or anything like that. It was just one of those natural things where you, but just, you know, now that I'm 44, looking back on that specific event, of how he targeted me, how he brought me in for these goldfish, how he made me sit right where he wanted. And all of this being all done without even my knowledge. And, and even if I didn't tell my father, which I don't know if I did or not, I can't recall if I did or not. That shows you, like even here, this is a tenant. This is somebody I have no loyalty to, no nothing. And as a young, I think I was 14 years old, Again, you know, not stupid. Like I, like as soon as he, you know, put his, I, I knew this guy's, this guy's funky. Get the hell out of this room, right? But I don't know if it was to the point that I told my dad because I'm 14 years old, 10 foot tall, and bulletproof. I can take care of myself, type of, you know, personality, and you know, that's just how I was. And so I just think about that, looking back on that, and how easy that was, even at 14 years old. And this girl here has been in this man's care since she was six years old, at, at minimum, at minimum. I think she might even have been closer to five when uh, her mom was her mom was introduced to this man. So I really do have um, issues. And then we hear about this whole ordeal going around about 2022. You know, uh, her friend doesn't want anything more to do with her because Stefan's... Uh, you know, he's armed all the time and he's threatened to alive himself to Jen over this fight. She never had an idea what the fight is. And then we go to another area, which is the Reddit post and what Stefan was doing at the time that all this stuff was going on when her friend wants to leave her and doesn't want to talk to her. And we start hearing this conversation about good touch and bad touch and gropey uncle and all this other stuff. And we're thinking and he's making it out like somebody is not wanting to be affectionate with grandma. And I don't think it was grandma. I think it was him. I think Maddie didn't want to be affectionate with him and him and um, Jen were having fights over it. And it was because he had already started abusing this girl. This girl didn't know anything because remember her grandma says she was fearful and would not sleep alone. Is it because she thought the boogeyman was sneaking in? Because it sure looks like he was. I'm going to leave it with that. All right, guys, you take care. God bless. Uh, prayers for uh, justice for Maddie, you know, and if mom had a hand in this or mom knew or she told her mother, if she told her mother and her mother did anything, I would be so sorely disappointed. I just don't believe it. So far, everything I've, I've heard about Jen Soto has been, you know, outside of her mental health and, you know, not seeing red flags when it comes to Stefan has been a love for her daughter. And, you know, we see piece of shit parents here on this channel all the time. And as much as, as people are judging this lady, I'm just, I, I'm seeing a woman that really loved her daughter that didn't, that didn't intend or mean to put her in harm's way um, and didn't believe she did until it was too late. So it's just something to ponder, just something to ponder, guys. Take care and God bless. Don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And until next time. Please be safe and kind to one another. God bless.
As you wake up in the morning, you want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.